man, oh man, I'll tell you what, this is the man, this is a powerhouse, we got Poncho getting ready to speak about the Runaway Freestyle video, and getting ready to speak his mind on what he has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up here in the next few minutes, when we get back from this commercial break, you will see Poncho get interviewed, Poncho Blazing ATM get interviewed by yours truly, James Flemington. And you don't want to miss this because it is going to be a classic. Stay tuned. Every day, people risk their lives. I've had enough. I've had enough. Every day, they fight to survive. And every day, the media is always watching. So unless you are professional, unless you're a student experience, unless you're old or young, it doesn't matter. The cameras are always watching. The media is always listening. And the mics are always on. Unless you're guiding, please don't try this at home. Oh man, you know throughout my struggles, throughout my times in history, we have never seen a more deserving and more passionate uh, fight than that was between Underdog and uh, G-Ship, man. And between, and the way that that match ended with uh, the boys from uh, Atlanta. Man, have mercy. But let's go now. As you can see, can, a cameraman, can you get a close-up shot of my blood and everything? Oh, my, my, my. Check out those scars. Check out the wounds of war. Check out the busted sacrifice that it took me to pounce on that opponent, man. I'm telling you. They didn't want to go there with James Slimington. No, they didn't. But let's go right now to Poncho Blazing ATM. And Poncho, we know for a fact that you were stowing after the Runaway Freestyle video. Your comments about why people, uh, some people denied it and why you are very frustrated. How do I feel, man? How, how, James Wilmington, man, you know, uh, how do I feel? I feel a little terse. I feel a little uh, hardness. I feel a little desire, a little passion in my stomach. But you know, uh, something that, you know, since day one, since the day I was born, people's always, there's some people that's always laughed. There's some people that's always said I'm different. There's some people that's always said that this not be a star. There's some people that say that. Oh, this man ain't gonna be nothing, whatever. You see, here's the problem with that. Every every time I deliver, every time I make an impact, here comes that old fox. Here comes that person that just wants to make everybody's life miserable. Every time I do something out of the ordinary, every time I do something that is not scripted the way it's supposed to be? Oh, well then, somebody is mad. Somebody gets offended. Somebody gets offended, offended, offended. But most of all, someone always is patronizing, patronizing on the stuff that I do. There's that one person. You see, I just don't get it, though. I mean, honestly... I'm gonna be. I'm gonna admit. At first, when I started rapping hip hop, my freestyle game was terrible. I mean, there, there's days I couldn't even do nothing. I mean, honestly, like I could not start. I could not rhyme or do anything. But yet, still, despite all that, despite working hard in the studio, despite my hard work, despite me being the hip hop artist of the year. In 2015 and 2016, still that lack of respect, that lack of power, and that lack of me saying that I cannot rap, that I cannot freestyle, that I cannot write a song, that my music is terrible, I'm not going anywhere, still irritates me, irritates me, irritates me, irritates me. And when you talk about people around me, you see, 
I honestly don't give a monkey's uh, rain. I don't give a monkey's high tail. If you talk about me, if you make fun of me, if you talk about my music videos, if you talk about oh how I can't rap or anything. But it's another thing. When you start messing with my family, you see my dad, James Van Hollen, uh, at times. Does he deserve to get laughed and made fun? Does he deserve to get treated like a piece of crap? 99.5% of the time, that would probably be a yes. 99.5% of the time. That's just me, though. I mean, honestly. Now, my brother, there's people that talked about him because of the way that I do stuff, of the way how I shoot video shots, of the way how I do music. I let that slide about two or three times. I let that slide because I know Hunter can take care of himself and I know Hunter could take out anyone who tried to get in this way, anyone who made fun of me or talked about me. I know Hunter could, Hunter and Dad are big boys. They can defend themselves. But it's another thing when you talk about my mama. You see now, that's where you cross the line. That's where you just don't do that at all. That's when you cross the line. When you start messing with my mama. And when you start saying, oh, once you get a church building, oh, then I will come to your church. Or, oh, man, you know, uh, I love you, uh, Minister Princess Hall. I love you, Sister Princess. But you know that son poncho of yours is out of control. That son of yours can't be contained. That son of yours is... Supposed to be a preacher, or supposed to be an artist, and he's doing stuff. You see, you can talk about me all day long, but when you talk about my mama, when you start making, when you start talking about her and start talking about oh church services, that's where you cross the line. You see, I got a family legacy of being in a church house. You can disrespect me all you want to. You can disrespect my music and say that my music's a number trash. But don't disrespect my family legacy of being in the church house. Don't disrespect my family legacy of worshiping God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Don't disrespect my family legacy of me being saved, my grandfather being saved, my mama being saved. Because the moment that you disrespect my mama, the moment that you started to say stuff about my mom is where you cross the line. And when you cross the line, you pissed off the wrong Piece of blazing fire, trash walking, fire shout, loud music of an artist impact player. You've made me so mad. And you've not only made me mad, but you made the church people mad. Most of all, you made the sinners and backsliders that watch and listen to my music every single day. Because that could be the only church that they could have. That could be the only time that they see Jesus as somebody. It's through my music and uh, backslide. It's through music and music videos. And I swear to goodness, I swear to goodness, if you cause any of sinners and backsliders to not watch my music videos and listen to my music, if you cause any sinners and backsliders to go to hell because you can't keep your mouth shut, if you cause sinners and backsliders to walk away from God and turn away from God because of stuff that I do, because of the hard work and sacrifice that I put in, well then that officially pisses me off right there. You see, talk about my mom and backsliders and sinners, I will not allow it. In fact, let me show you uh, something. Can we roll the footage, please? Oh, yes, yes. And what you're seeing right here is just uh, photos, man, of stuff of that you, oh, my. I'm telling you, and on my years of freestyling and music video, if anybody else was doing something like that, hey, get praise or whatever, but... I'm sure there's some people that just couldn't resist. Either one, they was thinking about something else, or two, they was thinking about safety. And yes, folks, what you're seeing right now is some more photos, but except this time, wow, it's more safety. Man, you know, I just came back from the restroom and everything. I'll tell you something. That guy, Poncho, man, he is blazing.
Yeah, I will allow you to talk about me. Now, do you... Now, so according to me, somebody, a guy, JC, when he saw, when you saw something like that, you said, this is an embarrassment. And there was two or three other holier than thou, or two uh, other Christians that are whole, so holy that they can't stick a knife up their butt. You want to say that I'm mocking God? You want to say that me and my mama is mocking God because of stuff that I post? Because of stuff that I do? Because of the hard work and sacrifice that I do to put in rap and hip hop music? The hard work and sacrifice that I make sure that sinners and backsliders not only get the messages, but sinners and backsliders may have a chance the resurrect their soul, and they may have a chance to not only have fun and party, but may have a chance to come to God before it's too late. Because I'll tell you something, if you cause backsliders, backsliders and sinners to backslide and sin on the Lord because of stuff that I do, well then, you are in for a long treat. And Mr. JC wants to say that I'm an embarrassment, that this, that was an embarrassment. Well, you know what? I've always been an embarrassment ever since I was born. The only difference is, is that I admit from my mistakes, and the only difference is, I know without a shadow of doubt that I'm an impact player. And the only difference is, I love embarrassing myself. I love letting people laugh. I love making people have fun, have a good time. Because they may be going through something in life and they may be going through something that is way much worse than your issues. And you holier than now, you people that want to say, oh, if my mom gets a church building, then you'll come to church. And you want to say, if and if you had a church building? Well then, the Bible says that the church started out in one outbuilding, in one house, that is. So, as far as I'm concerned, the church is anywhere, but it's up to you to worship Him. And you know, as a matter of fact, the next time, you lucky I'm in a good mood, because the next time that you disrespect that's anybody, this is a warning to anybody, the next time anybody disrespects my mama or disrespects any sinners and backsliders that watch work that I do, all thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all thanks to God, you want to disrespect anybody, you will have a man. You will have the other side of me that I've not brought out in a long time. And trust me, you don't want to see the other side of me because the other side of me don't go away that easy. The other side of me stays as long as it has to to make sure that the competition and to make sure that you want to say that I'm embarrassment, but I'll make you look embarrassed. And so, I can't do it. But what I'm going to do is, they, is people that fight for their rights deserve a substitute. So what I'm going to do right now So I'm going to take this off. As a matter of fact, I might take my shorts off. Oh no, wait a minute. No, that'll be an offense. That'll be offensive to somebody. That will offend somebody if I take my shorts off. And did you look at the other uh, pictures? Now, does that look embarrassing to you? Or maybe you are lusting. And what I'm going to do right now, because it doesn't matter about this ring, and I think... You all would know who this guy is, and I think you understand that I ain't playing games, and you think, and you know that, understand that I am A-T-M, the man from Miami, Florida, the man from Orlando, Florida, Mr. 305 ATM, Aaron Tank Marshall, built out of power, built out of speed, Build out of authority. So do not make me be ATM. Do not make me be Aaron Tate Marshall. And do not make me turn into this 
machine and this monster because I will be victorious and I will make sure that you will not make my mom or make any sinners and backsliders disappointed. I will make sure that you are embarrassed far more than I am. So if you don't want to get embarrassed, I suggest you keep me in a good mood because if I have to turn to ATM, if I have to turn into a big walk and talk black African American walk and building machine, then I must do what I must do to get the job done.